Another one of DCMA's metrics is the hard constraints. So it looks at constraint type, which is a different field. So all the other metrics that we were talking about at the beginning look at the predecessors and successors. There's a field called constraint type, and there is a default. The default is going to be as soon as possible, but there are many others that you can choose from. You can do a start no earlier than, finish no later than, must start on or must finish on. There is a 5% margin for this. You don't want your whole schedule to be such hard constraints because then you've lost all dynamic and logic to your schedule. You might have linked things, but they won't move because you said must this task must finish on this date. Recap of hard constraints. So you want to identify the constraints on tasks. That's basically what you're doing. And why is this important is because Constraints disable the dynamics of the schedule. It prevents that logic and that network. So when you build a schedule to do all this stuff, it can flow and be dynamic and do those what if drills and be the tool that can help you manage, be that forecasting model that you need it to be. But once you start adding constraints, it ruins it. You then can't move like the tool should be. We're now finally out of looking at just this predecessors and successors field field we're going to look at is constraint type. In here, how to calculate it, you're going to count how many incomplete tasks use the start no later than, finish no later than, must finish on, and must start on. The start no earlier than and finish no earlier than, those are soft constraints, just like the start no later than and finish no later than. However, in this metric, DCMA does say the start no later than and finish no later than are part of the constraints because it is limiting how far right your schedule can push out. The start no earlier than and finish no earlier than, while they are soft constraints and they don't allow you to pull left any in the schedule, which I would add these to this metric, but DCMA does not because most likely you're not pulling your schedule in. Most of the time people are pushing their schedule out because they didn't plan well or something just comes up. It's just not forecasted and you need to be able to show a slip. When you have start no later than and finish no later than and must finish on and must start on, those don't allow you to slip right. It's gonna ruin your logic and your schedule. So you're gonna count how many have that type of relationship and then you're gonna divide that count by the incomplete task. This metric is looking at incomplete tasks. DCMA does have a goal, is you need to work towards getting less than 5% of your task to not have these hard constraints. And again, start no earlier than and finish no earlier than are not part of the calculation. An example of this is you're gonna count those tasks. We still have the 441 incomplete tasks. One of those is a must finish on, two of them are a start no later than, seven of them are a start no earlier than, and one is a must start on. Remember, the start no earlier than doesn't count. So you have four tasks that have hard constraints. Four divided by the 441 is 0.91. So you're still good for the amount of tasks allowed and you're still within margin. When you're in project to find this metric is you're gonna be looking at the column called constraint type. In this, it's gonna have the default, which is as soon as possible, if you were to have used any other constraints, this is where you're gonna find it and you can filter on it. So what we would do is we would uncheck the as soon as possible and click okay to find out what tasks are using constraints that are other than the as soon as possible. Here you can see I have two. One is actually in the past, but it was because I probably set a specific date and that put a soft constraint on it, which is the start no earlier than. Now in this metric, the start no earlier than is allowed. So we can leave that alone. But I have another one in here that's the must finish on, and that's on my project completion. You're allowed to set this. So we can go and look and say how many of these tasks, I have one. Now total task is I have 71 tasks, but that's where I would look at the actual finish to say, okay, but how many are incomplete? So I'd look at the actual finish column to see which ones are still incomplete. And it says that I've got 11 that are complete. So 11 out of the 71. So that means there's 60 still incomplete. And if I just have one that has a hard constraint out of the 60, that's it. One and a half percent. I'm still in the margin. So we're good here. But this is how you would check it is look at that constraint type make sure that the majority of them are as soon as possible. Now, start no earlier than again is allowed, but you still want to keep that under check too because DCMA says it is allowed because most likely your schedule is going to be pushing out, not pulling in. But the start no earlier than does affect if you were to pull in a schedule. It's not going to let you pull in that task. So you want to keep them at a minimum. So recap for this metric is you want to identify the constraints on each task. 
and then you're going to filter on the constraint type field to get this information. You don't need to look at as soon as possible or start no earlier than or finish no earlier than. You're just looking at the must finish on, must start on, and the start no later than and finish no later than constraints. Add those all up together, divide it by the incomplete task, and that gets your percentage. And you're only allowed to have no more than 5%.